Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. So in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about maintenance on the DIY uh, incubator that we built here on the channel. Uh, this incubator has been running pretty much around the clock for the past three years on and off. Um, and it just now is requiring some, what I'm considering uh, more in-depth maintenance besides you know keeping it clean and whatnot. Uh, I do have a fan that has a bearing that's starting to fail um, af after it warms up you can really hear it starting to grind um, and i've also uh, i had uh, one of the heating elements one of the light bulbs burned out so i'm going to go ahead and replace both of them um, for those of you who are not familiar with the diy incubator uh, it's a cabinet incubator that we built here on the channel i will link leave a link in the description down below if you want to you know look into a little bit more of that but it's a real simple incubator to build uh it's very reliable uh, like i say there's you know probably several hundred of these in existence today and from everyone that i've talked to um you know they're working great they're not having any problems with them the best thing about them is they're very easy to maintain uh, the parts are cheap and uh you know, if you could build this box, you could easily maintain it. Um, so what we're going to do, I am going to, I've, I've got it running right now, and I don't know how well you can see inside the box or hear that fan. Uh, it's the fan that, that's on the right-hand side that's making the bearing noise, and you could probably see that one of the, the light bulbs uh, is also burned out. And uh, so we're going to go through and we're going to swap that out change change both fans out because like i say these fans are three years old and i'd really like to you know put some new fans in there so i don't have to worry about it anymore and same with the heating elements we're going to go ahead and replace them so basically let me get this unplugged real quick because we don't need power on it now uh basically during the the build process um there is a panel on the back of the incubator that is removable and this is the main reason that uh, we built it like this so if you ever did have to uh, access the fans to replace them you just unscrew this back panel and take it off and you can access both fans Let's see if i can get this off here real quick see and here are both of your fans right here um, the way I've got it set up, I've got the nut, uh, there, there's four screws holding both fans in, and I've got the uh, nut side of the screw here. So basically all I got to do is loosen these nuts up, the fans will slide off, and then we can, you know, install the new ones. So I'm, go I'm not going to do that on camera, but I just wanted to show you that that's the easiest way to access it. It's also a good time to get back here and clean out this area. I can see I've got... Uh, a lot of chick down uh, down here and some uh, looks like uh, pieces of eggshell so that's a good time to get that all cleaned out <clears throat> so I'm not going to do the fans on camera uh, if, if you have built this thing you are you already know how to install the fan so I just wanted to show the people that uh, have not built the box yet um, how you can access the fans uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the uh, heating elements uh, the light bulbs in the video uh, the recommended wattage for the bulb is a 60 watt incandescent, but unfortunately incandescents are really hard to come by nowadays. So what I did is upgraded the heating element to a 75 watt halogen bulb. These bulbs are readily available. I found them at, uh, you know, your big box, uh, stores like Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, they also are available at Walmart. And if you can't find them there, I found them on Amazon they're pretty prevalent on Amazon so there's uh, no issue finding them but these bulbs are 75 watt halogen with a 53 watt equivalent to the incandescents and these work um, just as well that's actually what I've been running for a while um, as far as the fans go there's two different types of fans that I've been recommending for the box one and this is what we show in the uh, original build video is the arctic f8 fan it's a 12 volt fan it's low rpm low noise thing i like about it, that i like about it and i didn't even notice this until today is these fans come with a six-year warranty so that's how uh well these fans are built the other fan 
that I've been recommending. This is a 120 volt fan. This is an Axial 8038. And originally I bought two of these that I was going to install in another DIY box that I had, but I, I just never got around to it. So I actually installed one Axial in a box um, because it was, it was a larger fan and it was moving more air. But if you wanted to go with the 120 volt fan, it's the Axial uh, 8038. And I'll, I'll leave a link in the description down below for all this stuff. Um, so as far as uh, replacing the bulbs, you know, they're very simple. You just unscrew them and screw the new ones in. Same with the fans, pull them out. Uh, you will have to rewire the new fans. Um, and I do want to say a lot of people have questioned me on how to wire the fans because they come, uh, the, the cord for the fan has three wires on it. And people are always, you know, uh, asking me, you know, which wire is what? Um, do I use all the wires? The three wires are the center wire is your hot wire. The one of the two outside wires is going to be your negative. The other one you don't need to use. That's just a, a speed control for the fan. So don't worry about that wire. Um, but what you want to do is hook up your, your center wire, hook that to your hot leg of your power, and then touch uh, one of the two outside wires to your negative, And that will tell you which one is which. The other one, like I say, just cut off and, and don't worry about using it. Uh, another question that I've run into, uh, people wanted to know, what, uh, how, how do we go about building the uh, uh, trays, the hatching trays for this incubator? And it's very simple. I mean, the, the um, egg turners that we use, or the ones that I've used, are the uh, little giant egg turner. And basically all you gotta do if you wanna build um, your hatching tray is just get the width of that egg turner, which it should be right around 16 inches um uh, closer to 15 inches uh, that's how wide you can build your tray or if you wanted to you could actually just open up open up your cabinet and measure the inside width which is 16 inches so you could build your uh hatching box 15 and three quarter inches wide that'll give you a little bit of room on each side to slide it and uh the depth can be up to uh, I would say 17 inches at the most. I went 15 and three quarters wide by 16 inches deep. And I'll show you real quick. I'm not going to build one just because uh, it's, it's so simple and I really don't need another hatching tray. But let me show you the ones that I do have. Um, this one is just a very simple uh, top. It's uh, half by half boards uh, with a quarter inch hardware cloth stapled to it and just you know build it in the dimensions you want um, this tray I put a little handle on this one when I first built it this top piece you don't need to do that you can have your cover fit the entire thing and just grab the edge of it when you slide it out I, do, I made it to where I could grab it with my hand and slide it out but you don't have to do that but basically uh, just get the measurements of your tray like this one is 15 and a half wide and 16 inches deep and then I believe two and a half inches tall. Um, so as long as it's gonna fit vertically in between the two rails, the height, you can make it whatever you want. If, if a one by four is what's available to you, which is gonna actually be like three and three quarters. Let's see if that will fit. Um, three and three quarters is gonna be, not, gonna be really tight. So you're gonna wanna rip it down to about three inches height on, on the, the, the up and down height on this and the depth 16 inches and then 15 and a half or 15 and three quarter inches wide uh, will work and then just basically just frame it out uh, staple your quarter inch hardware cloth to the bottom and you're good to go you don't have to be really fancy with the uh, the hatching trays guys um, I had a lot of people ask me to do a video on it and I'm like well they're so simple to build I really don't want to you know spend the time just doing a video when I can just explain it to you the one thing I will advise you though, is if you're gonna build these hatching trays using wood, to seal the wood after you've completed it. Take some type of uh, a sealant and just paint over it. Uh, the reason for that is the wood can absorb moisture and can affect 
your humidity levels inside the incubator. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest questions I get is I can't get the humidity levels up high enough. And a lot of it, you know, when you, you go into lockdown, you put your hatching trays in, a lot of it is most likely due to this wood absorbing the moisture, keeping your humidity levels down. <clears throat> so as far as maintenance, um, that's basically all you have to do on this box. Like I say, keep your fans. Uh, once they start making noise, once you start hearing bearing noise, it's time to pull them out. Even if they're running um, and, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. Once you hear that bearing noise, I would swap them out. These fans are real inexpensive. I think I got two fans for like $12. So they're pretty inexpensive. Uh, the light bulbs, um, I change the light bulbs out about every six months regardless. Um, just because, like I say, you know, for five bucks you can get four bulbs. That's two changes on your, your uh, heating elements. Uh, another question that I've been getting a lot of is placement of the... Uh, temperature probe. <clears throat> now there's there's two things that I say on that. The first one is in the video of uh, the build video I say you want your sensor probe even with the <coughs> excuse me the top uh, turner tray and that is because heat rises and that will be the hottest temperature. But I've actually found out and I've, I've had to recommend this to a couple people was to feed it down in between the two trays that way your, your temperature is only going to be about a half a degree difference between the lower turner and the upper turner. Um, if you, you look right here, we've got a little probe sticking through that's actually a, uh, a meat thermometer and that is in between the two rails. So I'm getting a, a temperature um, reading of the in between the two uh, incubator trays. So it gives me a pretty close uh, um, temperature reading of what's going on inside the box. Uh, as far as the Inkbird, I have never had to uh, replace one of these. I've never had one fail on me. Uh, like I say, this one here is better than three years old. It's still going strong, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, the settings, we did do a video on the settings that you want to use for the Inkbird. I'll go ahead and link that also in the uh, description down below. Um, make sure that you change all three settings, guys, because if you don't, you will run into issues with uh, um, temperature variations. I mean, it might, uh, it might not turn on when you expect it to turn on, or if it does, the temperature drops down a little bit too low before it turns back on. So there, like I say, there's, there's three settings that you want to make sure that you change on the Inkbird uh, to make your incubator function properly. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that, uh, any other questions that we've had. I did have one person, and uh, I've already answered it, but if you look at the side of the door, I've got screws here, and I've got one here on the side of the cabinet. What I do is I've, I've got a bungee cord, and when I'm in the cabinet, that bungee cord hooks on the, the first screw, the one that's on the cabinet, and when I go to close it up, I just hook it on that second screw, and it holds my door tight, and then it's just hooked back here in the foam. So... Guys, I think that's about it. I hope this, uh, you know, helps some of you uh, who have built the box and are wondering about maintenance or wondering about changing out fans or heating elements and, you know, which, which bulbs to use, which fans to use. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the, uh, the question se section down below. I try to get in there and answer questions as best I can. Um, I want to thank you guys. Uh, for joining me. I want to thank you for being a loyal uh, viewer of the Caternix Corner YouTube channel. Uh, thanks. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, hit that like button and we'll see you on the next one.